guys, how's it going? So this is part two of our butterfly garden series where we're actually gonna talk about plants. So part one uh, wasn't really about butterfly gardening other than the fact that I created this picket fence out of pallets to contain our butterfly garden. And that was a super fun project. Uh, it was a hot project though. I was putting it out here in the full sun when it was 100 degrees, it's supposed to be 100 plus today, like I'm already starting to sweat, um, but it should be a beautiful outcome, I think. Look at this sweet fence. I am just absolutely loving it. Even with nothing around it, nothing in it, I just think it's so cute. It's just so much better than what was there, which was nothing. You know, we removed the tool shed and then it's just been sitting there bare. And of course, you know, we've got kind of a mess going on right next to it. So it'll be nice to have something beautiful and contained. And honestly, like this is gonna be Benjamin's butterfly garden, but this sort of thing would be a perfect kid's garden going forward. Whether or not it stays here, which would actually be perfect because it's full sun, or if it moves somewhere else, just a little 10 by 10 space that they can call their own um, throughout the years. That's what I had growing up. I didn't have a cute picket fence around it, but I had my own space and I really enjoyed that. I'm gonna step into the shade really quick. I've got a trailer load of plants right in front of me, but I think the first thing that we're gonna do before we actually plant, we've got to amend the soil. I'm gonna put in a bunch of compost and then Benjamin and I will head down to the garden center and pick out maybe something to go right in the center of the garden. We may end up doing a container that I have here. I was kind of thinking though something with water and maybe something kind of shallow so it could kind of serve as a water source for the butterflies. Uh, I don't know what they have down there right now. And I've got the Hebe fountain, but that one is a little bit too big and I think we'll use her on the new property. Um, so soil amending, we'll set up a little bit of our infrastructure in terms of um, the centerpiece and then stepping stones and then plants. Let me show you my initial sketch here. It's very sloppy, so pardon my handwriting and scribbles and such, but I was envisioning, you know, the fence like this, the opening with some stepping stones going in, something in the center with maybe some lavender around it, and then I just want to pack it full of pretty things. The fun part, though, with how it ended up out here, I was able to pop it, like set it back from the bricks enough to where we have a one foot planting bed around the front of the pickets as well. So this is the back. We won't plant here because there's already plants in a flower bed, but along this side and then the front and the front on this side and the side, we can plant some really fun, colorful things. And then I did list out some things like I wanted to pick up. I've got a butterfly house and nectar. I don't have a feeder. I've got to find one of those, uh, some kind of water source, and then a list of plants that butterflies really like. And I think we're gonna be successful with this beautiful load of plants. Look at all of this color. I can already see there's a honeybee on the lavender right now. Now, if we don't even uh, attract butterflies, I know we'll attract honeybees. So this will be a pollinator heaven. Um, so of course we got the sweet romance lavender. I am using a few perennials, even though this is a temporary space, it may end up not being temporary. Um, Either way, I can move these around easily. So Sweet Romance Lavender, I have the Yellow My Darling Echinacea. Here's one that's more fully opened. Look at that, beautiful bright color. I've got the Suncredible Saturn Sunflowers right here. I've got three purple fountain grass because I thought it might be nice to have a grassy texture and a darker color in here, just contrast all the green, even though those of course won't attract butterflies. We've got Salvia Wendy's Wish. These are the ones I plant, uh, picked up at Far West when we went to Boise, Aaron and I that one day, as well as this green Nicotiana, which butterflies like both of those. I've got a Phlox here that's um, opening act sweet romance, I think, or romance. Not sweet romance, that's a lavender. Yep, opening act romance. And this is a Phlox that blooms um, like a heavy bloom set about now, and then it will bloom throughout the rest of the summer. So I think that'll be a really beautiful uh, accent. We've got some meteor shower verbena right here. Doesn't have an awful lot of color on it yet, but it will. And then I've got an agaratum, so a floss flower. This is a new variety for next year called Artist Pearl. So nice white blooms. It's supposed to withstand heat really well. I think they'll be happy to get out of their containers. Really interesting looking flower though. And then already over here, I've got Play in the Blues salvia sitting back there and the truffle of pink gomfrina. I just popped those in there last night because I was kind of wanting to see like a little color in there. A few other plants that butterflies love are of course milkweed, which I do have some seedlings in the greenhouse. I started from seed early on. I'm gonna leave some space in the, in the garden for those. They're not acclimated to our sun. And I did see that one report said we could get close to 115 in a couple of days. So I can't put them from like a shaded greenhouse situation right out in full sun. They'll have to be hardened off to that. So milkweed, lantana is a great one. Um, sedum, if you want some fall interest or like you know, midsummer through fall interest, 
this, that's a great one. Tithonia, which are the Mex Mexican sunflowers. Um, there's probably scads of other plants that will attract butterflies, uh, uh, pincushion flowers. I always notice that mine always have butterflies on them. Anyway, you can Google butterfly gardening and you can find big long lists of plants, but the ones I'm using today, the plants I'm using are the top ones that attract butterflies. Okay, I don't know if any of you guys can read my, my handwriting here, but I, you can see like the grasses in here. You can see a little drift of sunflowers, sunflower salvias, echinaceas, the truffle of pink, which I think I'm gonna use lavender instead, or maybe I'll still use lavender along the walkway. I don't know. Milkweed, sedum, Oh, Monarda is another good one to use right there. I don't think, do I have any of that? I don't think I have any of that. Anyway, super rough sketch. So now I need to go gather up Benjamin. He was very excited to go down to Andrew's Seeds. So we're gonna go down there and see what we can find for the center of this garden. Okay, got both the boys. We're gonna head down to Andrew's. You excited, Benjamin? Yes. <laughs> All right, bud, you ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Okay. There's some really pretty flowers up here, Benjamin. Hi, Benjamin. There's Monica. How's it going, Kev? Hug. Hey, buddy. All right, Benjamin, let's see if there's any pots or a little fountain that we can... Whoa, look at that. Look at that, buddy. It's a peacock. That's a big old bird. That one? Yeah. Oh, look. Oh, the... It's Christmas lights. You like the Christmas lights? And that one's here. Oh, there's an apple. Mm-hmm. Hello, birdies. That's a beauty, isn't it? I feel like that one would dry up really fast, or it would the wind would probably blow that water everywhere. That's a that's a oh don't don't drink it. Yucky yucky. <laughs> Let's see what's in here, baby. Those are pretty yellow flowers, huh? A little coreopsis right there. Mm. There's some pincushion flowers. When, when they're done, flowers, I can go see them. When they're done looking at flowers. When they're done looking at flowers? Yes. So I'm not seeing any small fountains. Uh, they did start their summer sale like a couple of days ago. And so I'm actually noticing that quite a number of things uh, that I once saw are not here anymore. That's a good thing. <laughs> Especially when it's gonna get so hot. That one is called Butterfly Blue. That's perfect. What other flowers do you like? Um, this one too. Perfect. Okay, let's find some different colors, sweetie. How about that one? How about this one? That one is beautiful. Thank you. Here we go. We see that one. We see that one. And this one. And that's my boy. Back him in there, buddy. <laughs> and that one, that's the end. Great job, bud. Lots of flowers up here. Look at, there's some marigolds. There's, um, oh, there's some calendula, bud. Do you want one of these? Um, I do want one of those. That's a beauty. Right here. Great job. Oh, look. Wait for a second. Why? Look, yeah. That's gonna, pretty, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna use white. I love it. Okay, do you think that's enough, bud? Um, see one more now, now bud. That's the last one. Whoop. That's cute. You pull it down, bud. Oh, there you go. Oh. That's okay. You gonna put it in the box? All right, our box is full. Good job. Okay, we're back home. Here's the box of plants that Benjamin picked out. So we have a Supertunia Vista fuchsia, right? Is that a Vista fuchsia? Looks like it. There's a couple of pincushion flowers in here. Butterfly blue is what it's called, so it's quite perfect. There's a Lady Godiva yellow calendula. There's a few zinnia plants and then a couple of random petunia colors. Should add a very nice touch to the mix today. And Benjamin is actually inside. I do have an umbrella that I'm gonna try to move uh, around to where I'm working and try to stay in the shade as much as possible. And I'm gonna get the bigger stuff done first. So I'm gonna go get the stepping stones. I'm gonna pick out a pot for the center uh, or something like that. We didn't find anything down at the garden center for the center piece, but we can figure something out. Anyway, I wanna get the bulk of it done and then have him come out to plant his box of flowers. And that way he's not out in the heat uh, for too long. So I'm just gonna set a camera up, you guys. We'll see how it comes together and then I'll kind of walk you through everything I did 
to get it to whatever point it ends up at today. I have a feeling that we'll be adding some things along the way too. I thought uh, it would be really fun to do a, a homemade kind of twig arbor of some kind and maybe uh, incorporate some twinkle lights, something like that. So anyway, here we go. You're gonna plant butterflies? I'm not gonna plant butterflies. This box of flowers with butterflies too. Cool. Let's go find your box of flowers. There. Look, I make, I can make it higher. Cool. Good job. Okay, so your box of flowers is right over here. You can place them wherever you want to. Okay. Okay. So here's your flowers. Should we place the calendula first? Okay. So we have all of this space up here open, Benjamin. Do you want to put the flower down, maybe like kind of by the blue one? Oh, that's gonna be beautiful, babe. All right, do you want to place another one? Um, not that one yet. Okay. Let's do, let's do the pink one. Okay, sounds good. Yes. Okay, that way I know where to dig the hole. Perfect. Oh, there it comes back. Uh-oh, we might lose him to the daddy on the lawnmower, huh? interest level <laughs> peaked come right here yeah he's coming oh he will in a minute you want to put this one down um, do you want to put it out here sweetheart or, yeah, we need flowers right out here oh so there's a, a lots of space out there um, then i'm gonna put this one right right here next to the blue one next to the blue one okay let's do the purple one the purple okay. one yes that's that is called a petunia bud, and it's beautiful. You did a good job picking out flowers. That's fantastic, bud. All of these plants are going to get really tall and really big, and if you plant the short one back in the back, you may not be able to see it. So it might be better to put it either on an edge over here, or, or tucked in by a lavender. I'll tuck it right here. Tuck it right there. Right, right in the pink ones and right in the blue ones. Okay. That'll, that'll be perfect. Yes, it will. I'm gonna just jump down right here to the blue ones right here. Okay. Um, the, the white one. Okay. This is so cute, you guys. Oh, three-year-olds are awesome. Do we need some over here, buddy? Huh? Do you wanna put that one over here? You didn't put any flowers over here. Yeah, I think that's great, bud. Okay, I'm gonna dig all the holes and then you can help me put them in the ground if you want. Okay, he's gonna go see Ken. <laughs> Hi, Benjamin, you wanna come put this one in the ground? There's the hole. You know how to tamp the soil around it? Make sure you push it down in the hole like that and then push the soil all the way around the roots. That looks fantastic, bud. the planting is all done and we actually ran drip so I did my planting yesterday and then it was so so hot yesterday afternoon and then Aaron came out here after I was done with that and we ran the drip system I did not turn the cameras on for that part so I'll give you a tour through that and kind of explain how we ran that to this area and then this morning Benjamin and I came out when it was a little bit cooler it still doesn't feel that much cooler but a little bit cooler and he placed every single one of the flowers that he picked out yesterday and we started to plant he planted one and then I could hear Aaron on the lawn tractor like getting 
closer to us and I thought, oh, I'm gonna lose Benjamin to the lawn tractor. And sure enough, he wanted to go right around on that, which is totally fine. So I finished up the planting um, and I think it's just gonna be a really fun space. Okay, so here's the space pre-mulch. Um, we'll go over the plants first. So you can see the three stepping stones here, which Benjamin and I may or may not paint them. I don't know. It kind of just depends on how things go. It looks really cute, I think, the way it is. Now, these came out of flower beds, so I did not even buy those. Those were just kind of placed around here and there. Every once in a while, I dig a hole and I'll find one. So we have quite the stack in back of the barn, which is nice. And then I have a pillar here, and I used one of the pots from Unique Stone and then lemon jade sedum. So I decided not to do something super colorful. I wanted to do something that was more weighty in here because we've got a ton of color going on and I didn't want, it would look like too much because I got, I've got a tremendous amount going on in this space. It's going to be super fun though. And the lemon jade can take the full sun because that's what it's gonna get all day long. And I didn't even run a dripper to it because it's sedum and that's kind of another reason why I wanted to put it here. Basically you plant it, no fertilizer necessary, and it just sits here and I'll water it probably twice a week or so. Maybe three times a week when it's 108. Okay, and as far as the plants, we've got the Wendy's Wish salvia, and I dotted those. So we've got one right here, there, there, one over here, and then one outside the fence right over there. We've got the Saturn sun, uh, sunflowers, one in the corner, and then there's a grouping of three right in here. We've got three fountain grass, one there, there, and there. And then I have a huge drift of the lime green Nicotiana. So there's three in a grouping here. And then there's a drift that starts here and it goes all the way around to the meteor shower verbena, which I've got a little grouping of what, three? No, just two, no, three. One, two, three of the meteor shower verbena. And I thought that this green would be kind of a nice break, um, kind of a, a break in color, I, I guess you could say. And then we've got play in the blue salvia. I've got one here, two on the outside of the fence. We'll look over there in a second. Uh, where did I put the other ones? Three in that corner there. We've got some echinaceas, the uh, color coded yellow, my darling. One, two, three in a little grouping. A couple of the flocks right here. And then this is the Price is White Echinacea right here. And then we've got a hedge of Sweet Romance Lavender leading up to the pillar on either side of the walkway. And then a little ring of Truffula Pink Gumfrina around the back side. And then uh, Benjamin's plants in here, he popped a pink cushion flower in there, uh, petunia there, purple petunia there, tucked the pink one back in there. So hopefully we see some of that kind of trail its way forward. I was encouraging him to plant them kind of forward. There's another one, uh, petunia there, pincushion flower, which he actually put the pincushion flower right next to the lavender. So I did move that one back because I think it would get lost because they kind of look similar. There's an orange zinnia right there, a yellow one here, the yellow one smack right in the middle of the lavender there. Uh, zinnia there and the calendula there and then I did uh, the buried treasure strawberry so I went white red and this goes white red white red white red white red all the way down um, there's also some coconut appeal thumbergia so the black eyed susan vine there's one in the corner one in front of the salvia down there and one on the other corner here so that'll be a really pretty vine that kind of climbs up the fence so I swung around I mean you guys can see what's going on on this side all of this is going to be changing. This is the pondless waterfall that we are going to be moving. Um, and I just didn't want to, since we're going to be kind of clearing this area out, I just going to leave it sitting here so we don't have to pile it anywhere else. Um, and we'll figure that out later. But I've got the play in the blues and the grass here. And then this whole area that's strung off. Is that what you say? Roped off. <laughs> so it starts at the fence, goes over here here and then goes all the way back around i planted sunflowers in this whole area so when you're standing especially you know right here you're just going to see a big bank of sunflowers behind this garden here probably pretty quick with the heat they'll come up fast so a ton of plants a lot of color um, and just kind of a cottagey feel i don't know it's kind of fun to play stuff in here just a little bit haphazardly i figured as long as i had like the lavender hedge and something ringing around the uh the pillar that would give some uniformity and then we could just film and fill in the rest rather with um 
whatever we kind of felt like. Now I did use a lot of perennials in this area too. It's likely that we'll come up with something similar for this area uh, or I can just pop those up and move them uh, to other areas in the garden. I am no stranger to that after the whole like transplanting so many things from around the gazebo. This little area doesn't scare me at all with the amount of perennials that went in. Okay, so let's talk drip system. You can see our grid in here. It's a half inch brown drip tubing with emitter holes every 18 inches. It actually originates right here in all this chaos. It originates right here, comes out of the ground, and then I just swung it behind the Japanese maple. You can see we didn't even like bother to mulch or like really pick up any of this stuff because it's just so temporary at this point. Anyway, it comes around the back side here. I used a straight coupler from the black poly and started my brown drip tubing here. And we ran a piece that goes, now this is a different drip system, goes to something different. This goes along the back side of the fence up to the corner and then takes off across that way. And then I'll show you once we get up there. Uh, but basically it's a giant square. So it goes this way as well and then goes over that way. And then we've got our grid lines running inside. Now over here, you can see kind of the squiggly quarter inch. This is where all the sunflower seeds are. And I kind of needed really good coverage over here. So I decided there's such short little or small little spaces that I just decided to run the quarter inch drip tube in this space right up here and then right there. Gosh, it's such a cute little space, isn't it? So you can see the brown trip tube in the corner and it comes down this way to feed all the strawberries. I did another elbow right here, it takes it off across the front and then I just teed in right here and it goes under the fence and goes along that way. And we actually looped, since this is such a small area, we looped around, came around this way, came back over here and teed in right here. And then I did the same thing, teed in, it runs through here, around the back, over here, underneath the fence and tees in again. And then this one goes around the fence and then around the pillar and back. I hope that all makes sense. But now I want to put a layer of mulch down over the top of it. And I think it's gonna just tidy it up and make it look really fun. Cannot wait to see the sunflowers come up because I have missed kind of that little block that we used to have with all of the trees and stuff that were there. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's mulch. And there you have it. That layer of mulch really helps. Just covering all the infrastructure, all those drip lines. Uh, but knowing that that is there is always so nice. Knowing I don't have to be hands-on except for fertilizing on occasion and the occasional watering of that pot. I even uh, had enough mulch to kind of bring it over this way. Just ignore this section for now. But I just put enough to cover the drip tube barely. Like you can kind of still see little pieces coming through. But that's okay because the sunflowers will come up so quickly. And they're in this whole section right here. So I mulched all the way around. Uh, let's see. Yeah, all the way around the back here. Uh, to the corner. So the only other things that we may do in this space, I was thinking of maybe making a little sign that said Benjamin's Butterfly Garden uh, and hanging it from the fence. I initially thought about putting little hanging baskets, like little window box kind of things with the strawberries in those. But then I kind of just want to see the fence. I think that it's easy to get excited with all these fun little ideas and then it can really start to look like too much, you know, really quickly. So we may do a little sign that says Benjamin's Butterfly Garden. We may paint these stepping stones together. Uh, maybe a few branches. I was thinking like four that we could bring up over the center thing and do lights on them. Possibly. I don't know. There's a, a ton of fun things you can do with a space like this. And you don't have to start with plants. You can start with seeds for a lot of these things. There are a lot of ways you can go about doing a garden like this. I mean, it was fun starting with the pallet fence, um, you know, getting the pallets for free, only utilizing things that I had here. Um, the plants, of course, I started with everything pre-grown, but you know, the zinnias, uh, lots of different salvias, nicotiana, uh, echinacea even, even lavender. I mean, you can start all of those things from seed if you want to kind of put that sort of time behind it um, and you can go whatever direction you want in terms of color Woo! did you see that was that a bee just flew right into my hair anyway yeah you can take it whatever direction you can do like just two or three colors and make it um, a little bit less wild you can do a monochromatic look if you wanted to but i think this is just going to be a really fun kind of 
festive looking area. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed this project. Cannot wait to show you what it looks like in just a little, little time in this heat. And I think everything is going to fill in fast. So we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.